For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Uh, what are some of the best evidences against billions of years and for a young world? Well, I mean, okay, I've got different things. There are some age indicators. There are basically some clocks. Now, the thing is, I mean, they're all age indicators have uh, require assumptions. Okay, I mean, I'm saying this right up front, whether it's the evolutionists or the creationists, we all have assumptions. But the thing is, even if we take the evolutionary assumptions of a constancy of rates of processes, there are a number of clocks that point to a much younger age than people think it is. And one of them I've just talked about is the instability of DNA and proteins. When you got Dr. Mary Schweitz, you may have heard of her. She's an uh, outstanding scientist in Montana now, I think North Carolina, who's this, who, who was the first to discover some uh, lots of dinosaur bones have soft tissues. They have red blood cells, intact blood vessels, um, animal protein, so not contamination from bacteria. And also in a T-Rex bone and a Hypacrosaurus bone, she found DNA and used the standard test to, to get DNA, to, to detect DNA. And the DNA detectable must be uh, reasonably intact to respond to those tests, okay? Uh, and yet the dinosaur, the T-Rex, was supposed to be 68 million years old. And yet uh, experiments on how fast DNA decomposes say it should be totally fragmented into its individual letters in a tenth of that time, even if it was frozen the whole time, minus 5 Celsius, about 23 Fahrenheit. So you freeze DNA, and, the, and it's going to be broken apart in, in about 6.8 million years. Oh, way. Okay, but yet dinosaurs were meant to have lived in warm climates. So the fast, it's very interesting. When you talk about reaction rates, they are often exponentially dependent on temperature. So if, so if dinosaurs lived in warmer climates, the DNA would break down much faster still. Right. So if it couldn't survive a tenth of that time, even deep frozen, it's not going to survive anywhere near that time if it was actually warm for a lot of that time. <laughs> right. That's that's right. I think the DNA in the diet is a really hard problem, and they're trying to sort of scramble around. Do they really find DNA? Well, you may as well throw that lab test away, like the DAPI, which produces a fluorescent signal, a standard way of detecting DNA in a double helix form because it just lodges in the group, minor groove of a double helix and makes a fluorescent signal. Okay, so uh, that's a standard positive test for DNA, and, and it was also in the right place to expect the DNA near where the cell nucleus would have been. So a lot of things uh, add up to actually finding DNA in dinosaur bones, and yet real chemistry shows it couldn't have survived that long. But the same chemical uh, methods show that it's consistent with the biblical time frame and how much would be expected in a biblical time frame. Well, um, a, a question from the audience dr sarfati and, and something i was going to ask anyway so um chris key says dr sarfati do you think the iron preservation hypothesis in respect is remotely plausible okay the iron preservation hypothesis is ready for the proteins that have been discovered i think it actually would not work for dna okay so it's a, it's a different thing what we're talking about is a reaction called the fenton uh, reaction and what fenton reactions usually does is to generate free radicals that normally destroy organic materials so what Dr. Schweitz is hoping is that the Fenton reaction might cross-link uh, some proteins and um, help to preserve them. But the Fenton reaction would also destroy a number of things they say they've observed. Some of the amino acids they say they've found would have been destroyed by the Fenton reaction. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say Fenton reaction occur, but it's not going to do what Fenton <laughs> reaction does. Right. The chemistry doesn't make sense. 
Yeah, they always want to have it both ways. And I've heard this ridiculous response, uh, Dr. Sarfati. I'm curious what you would um, say to it. I've heard the critics constantly try and downplay all this overwhelming evidence by pointing to the fact that Mary, Mary Schweitzer herself is not a young earth creationist. They use this as a rebuttal. What are your thoughts on that? The thing is, we've already, we, we said that too, you see. How is it a rebuttal when we actually say she is a theistic evolutionist herself? <laughs> right. so it's what we call an admission against interest. That's a legal term for it. She's a, a long, a, an old earther, but she finds these stuff, the stuff um, which go against her beliefs. And so she, of course, she's, she's trying to work out how to um, maintain her belief system in the face of the actual evidence. In fact, there's actually a revealing, um, I think uh, uh, it was a 60 Minutes interview with, with uh, Leslie Stahl, and it's interesting how they say uh, uh, that the laws of science show they couldn't have existed even one million years. So the laws of science say less than a million years, but she maintains their 68 million years, you see. So it's actually trying to find a way to get around the laws of science. Yeah, that's an awesome answer. Well, you, you just shut down that argument. And yet that's what, I think that's another admission of defeat, I guess, if, if that's what they have to resort to. And we are not saying that she is a young earth creationist. Um, well, in fact, if she wasn't a young earth creationist, then they'd actually attack, they wouldn't even uh, uh, publish her work, you see, because <laughs> yeah, she wrote, it was so controversial, her boss, Jack Horner, who's an atheist, I mean, she said, well, I don't believe it. How could this happen? How could blood cells survive that long? So go and do the experiment again, and then they find over and over again, well, the experiment actually showed they were there. Okay, right. so, yeah. and then you got challenged, was it really blood cells? Was it really blood vessels? You had the critics of Schweitzer attacking what she'd found, but I think she's won all those uh, debates against the critics. So, so they have to concede that she found what she said she found, that she was an, a, a good scientist, uh, and she was reporting honestly and, and accurately. And now they've got to trigger, well, okay, since they're there, how could they have survived? So hence the phantom reaction uh, proposal. Right. Hey, that, someone just popped up with a question. Can I talk about iron preservation and dinosaur tissue? <laughs> of course. Yeah. The Fenton chemistry can theoretically preserve proteins by cross-linking them. Theoretically. But you need a lot of iron. But that same process destroys DNA. <laughs> so you can't get both. You can't get proteins and DNA using iron as your answer. And so fine. If you evolutionists, you want to appeal to iron. Great. Go ahead. And there's not going to be any DNA in your body. Oh, there is evidence of DNA in dinosaur bones. <laughs> Sorry, evolutionists. <laughs> yeah. Now, no one's sequenced it yet. I, I, I'm not expecting much there at all. I'm actually shocked that they found any. Because 4,500 years, that's a long time for DNA. Yeah. That's a long, long time. Anyway.